Welcome back to New Day Northwest. You know, we don't often put cancer and comedy in the same category, but maybe we should, especially when it comes to dealing with the heaviness of this topic. A new book is bringing humor and support to caregivers and cancer patients. A Cancer Patient's Wife is a fictionalized account of a real life couple dealing with diagnosis and treatment and everything that goes along with it. It follows their story as they deal with the hospitalizations, the illness, and all those completely real feelings that come with the reality of fighting cancer. Joining me now is author and real life cancer patient wife, Marin Higby. Thanks so much for being here. Yeah, thank you. And, and thank you for, for writing this. But I have to ask, first of all, why did you decide to make it a fictionalized account? <laughs> I mean, you went through this. Why yeah. not just write an autobiography? Well, there are the people that are not so innocent. And it's not that they're bad people, but mm. people do very strange things when crises are happening. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't want to call them out directly, so <laughs> I uh, combined them all into one character who's one of the meanest characters I have ever seen. And I, I and funny is all get out. Okay. Funny and, and evil. Okay, all right. Just <laughs> as evil as cancer is. Why right. was it and how important was it to have humor when you were going through everything you were dealing with with your husband? That was crucial. That was the only thing that got us through. He was inpatient five days a week, home. So once he got in there, strapped up to Richard the chemo caddy, oh. um, he was there for five days, so we had to laugh our way through it. Otherwise, it just, it got dreary. And you're like, well, here we are. But yeah. if we just kind of laugh and, and, and keep rolling, we're going to get through this, and we're going to get through it well. Because with humor, there's still hope. Yes. When you lose that humor, there is no hope. Yeah. What I love that you've also done, along with the book, you've produced these hilarious video vignettes um, <laughs> that portray these highly relatable experiences. This yeah. one right here was my favorite. It was the coffee one, oh. where it, it was a situation where that you had experience where they, you know, a tiny little thing will set you, it doesn't, you know, you're mm -hmm. going through everything and this one tiny thing sets you off. Yeah. <laughs> Why was it so important for you to create these skits as a part of explaining the book and, and, and the whole process? Uh, it's, there's so many things that happen and you think you're the only one. You think you're it. And it's, and you're not. Like, I got mad, I lost my temper at Starbucks. I got drunk and went back to the hospital. You know, like you do these crazy things and there, there was no resources mm -hmm. right there to help me. I mean, there were, there was lots of people there to help me, but it just didn't, it just didn't feel right. I wanted people to understand that as yeah. a caregiver, you're having all these emotions too. And a lot of times people forget that caregivers having emotions, the cancer patients having emotions, the cancer patients worried about the caregiver, the caregiver, the cancer patient. And it just goes on and on. And it's like there needs to be more support for the caregivers as well. Seriously. And there was another video you did called Brochures, which uh -huh. as I remember dealing with my mom as she was going through cancer treatment and ultimately through hospice, they just kept handing me these stupid pamphlets. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't have the mental capacity to read this right now. Yeah. Talk to me about that and how this can be like the pamphlet that we need yeah. to not have to, you know, to help someone kind of going through all this. Well, it, the book gives you kind of a snapshot of what one journey is, my journey. Yeah. Um, based on my journey. Let's be careful. Yeah. Um, so that can help you see, oh, this is normal. It's okay to feel this way. It's okay to see these experiences. It's okay to forgive people. It'll, it'll help you get through that. Yeah. Um, because you get all those pamphlets and you don't know what to do. <laughs> but there's also a resource I've partnered with called onevillage.io and mm -hmm. they offer all kinds of resources. So this is one story about lymphoma, but they help you find your village if it's breast cancer, if it's lung cancer, if it's, um, yeah, I don't know, you name it, they they have resources that I wish they were around when I was going through it, but between the book, maybe you just wanna read something and laugh, maybe you wanna check out a website. And One Village, they're, you're working with them, they're going to help people find your book and provide them these, these resources, essentially, which I wish I'd known was out there. Yeah, yeah. So I'm really glad that you've written this, I'm really glad. By the way, how is your husband now? And, and, and if, if anything, what would you say to someone who's going through this right now? Oh, he is just this month five years in remission. Woo! Good so we five are years. clear. Happy anniversary. We are clear. So, um, and if I could say anything to anybody going through this, it would be, um, you're gonna be okay. You're gonna be okay. It's this is hard, and mm -hmm. and it's okay to realize that this is hard, and just look for people that will support you. And if people aren't supporting you, yeah. find people that will. Find people that will. 
Martin, thank you so much for writing this book. I wish it was around when I was going through some of the hardest times with cancer, but I appreciate what you're doing for everyone now. Great, thank you. Oh my goodness, all right.